so I made a namebot tutorial a while ago. It used the origin vector and it wasn't that great. Now it's time to fix that and make a namebot that aims on the head every time. We will literally go from zero to a fully working aimbot that aims on the head of enemies. If you want to skip directly to the coding part, then check the timestamp. In CSGO, we have our character and we have enemies. Both entities have an origin position, which is a point at their feet. These are the positions we used for the last aimbot and now we will do things differently. We are going to take the view slash camera position of our character, which we can get by adding the feed position with the vec view offset. The next step is to use the head location of the enemy and not their origin position. The head location will be stored in the bone matrix with the bone ID 8, but more on that later. So to sum it up, we use our camera position and the enemy's head location, not any origin vectors. Okay, so I have opened CSGO, I have started a bot game and of course uh, run CSGO in dash insecure mode if you're going to do any use sheet onion whatever you will otherwise get banned it's common sense so we want to find the head location of the enemies and since um, CSGO uses the entity class and it's has the same fields and so on for the local player that means we can find our players head location and apply the same logic to the enemies so we will find our local players head location so uh, you probably will need to go third person I don't know if the values show up in memory if you don't but go in third person for safety sake and when you're in third person you can go into i have reclass open all of the links for the different pay sample reclass sheet onion and so on will be in the description so don't worry about it reclass is for uh, viewing structures classes and so on and mapping them it's really nice i really suggest that you use it so first of all we will find our local player, which we can search on just local player, control F in haste dumper. Copy that, go into sheet and you don't really need sheet onion, but a lot of you guys probably are more used to sheet onion rather than reclass. So we will add the module client.dla plus the local player, and after that we will have to add the bone matrix offset so here's the bone matrix we copy that add it as an offset to the local player and now we get the address of all of the bones so you can take take this and write it into reclass and you will get uh, the bones directly but we can't copy it like we can copy it here. So I'll copy the pointer instead and write it here. So use these brackets to make reclass understand it. It's a pointer and it needs to be read into. And here we get a lot of floats. So uh, we only have 64 bytes to work with. So we'll add some more. And if you take a look at each float here, uh, it goes free down with zero point something, and then it has a position which kind of looks like uh, 
an in-game position, at least to me. And you go free down again with zero point, and then another, and free again, and then another. So it's X, Y, Z, which could be a coordinate, and that's uh, exactly what it is. So it's uh, three by four, since it's four, four, four. And what we can do in reclass, which is very nice, it's click on the matrix three by four, and it separates separates them nicely for us. So you get the X, Y, Z coordinates right here. Now, this is the first bone, so we can call it bone zero because it starts at zero. And for the head location, which is the bone eight or the eighth bone, which means we can just go into the calculator, uh, go into the programmer section, select hex and do ta eight times 30 because uh, a uh, three by four matrix with floats is uh, 30 bytes. So it's 30 bytes between each. Well, but if we do eight times 30, we get 180. So at 180 is our head location or our head bone, rather not the head location. And in reclass, uh, because we want it to look nice, we'll just select every one or every byte and click on the 3x4 matrix and we'll get each bone nicely separated and when we have done that, we can easily just go down to the 180 hex bone, which is here and rename it to head bone so we have found the head bow with reclass and we can test it in game. So we'll close that down. Don't mind cheating. And we can do get position. Now, for some odd reason, the actual position isn't this set position that you get. So we will use copy the set position, paste it, and you see you teleport somewhere else. I don't know why but it just is like that and after that we will paste the set position again change the set position into a draw cross this will draw a cro cross in game in the 3d space for us to see so we can check if the head location really is on the head and now instead of this uh, z position we will use our z Are position uh, no one is here. that we found in reclass since that's the important one so it's 183 and enter as you can see there is a cross at the exact Z position so I think we can say that we have found a way to get to the head position all of the time which is to go into the entities bone matrix and no one here. from the bone matrix go to the head bone which is the eight, eighth bone or bone ID 8 and select the X, Y, Z coordinates there. So with this information we will head into our C sharp project. I am going to start a new C Sharp console project. It will be the same structure if you use an interface, so don't worry. If you want to access the source code from this video, then check out my Buy Me a Coffee page down in the description. We are going to add some offsets, which we get from Haystamper, and then our memory class, which is Sved32. You can find all of the material in the description.
Lastly, we will import get async key state, which is for hotkeys, and then write a simple entity class to store the needed information like health and position. Now we're ready to begin writing our aimbot. Our player and the other entities will be global variables for easy access. The sved library also need to initialize with our process and to do that we use the get process method. After that we also declare our engine and client pointers. The while loop is our main task and it will call all of the functions we have which includes updating the information about the entities and other calculations. The first function we call is the update local player. This method stores our team and location. The difference now is that we add the Z coordinate of the view offset vector onto our origin vector. This results in a coordinate which is at our camera level. Now it's time to update the other entity's information. Here we store the health points, coordinates, dormant and magnitude. Since we're going to use the head location, we need to access the bone matrix. I created a new method that returns the head position in the form of a vector, which we can easily call with the entity pointer. We need to calculate the magnitude, which is easy peasy, but it looks a bit messy, so we will create its own function and call it instead.
Before we aim at the entities, we will order them by magnitude and check if we're holding down our hotkey. I chose mouse 5, but you can choose whatever you like. We also check if the entity is on the opposite team, otherwise we remove them from the list because we don't want to aim on teammates. Now the last aim function, which calculates the angles between our player and the enemy. It writes the new angles to our view angles inside the game, making our character aim directly on the head of the enemy. I made a few errors, which we fix here. Now with the error fixes, we will test it in game. Make sure to use das in secure in the CSGO start commands, and thereafter you can see the aimbot now with aiming on the head instead of a whack vector position. I will see you guys in the next tutorial, have a good one, make sure to subscribe.